Ah, oh, it worked. All right. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Conjure Community. This is Afternoon Astonishment from the Conjure Community Club or the World's Best Magic Club. I'm here with uh, Alexander Slimmer and Steve Barcelona. Uh, Aaron Fisher has the day off today. And today we're going to look at the stand up magic of Rich Murata. But before we get into that, Alex has a small disclaimer <laughs> for you. Take it out. Yeah. You, you definitely uh, want to, you know, listen with uh, an open mind today because we're going to be watching someone who's a stand-up comedian, right? And in a stand-up comedian environment, sometimes language can be a little bit looser than it would be in, uh, in you know, certain company. So know that there might be a word or here or there that you might hear and go, ooh, I wouldn't want to put that in my act. You know what I mean? So be aware. There's It's a comedy club and the language can get, you know, I, I edit it as much as I can, but there are moments where you'll see that, you know, there's something that happens. In fact, in the first one, there's a little bit of a finish. You'll go, woo, but it's funnier. You'll see. You'll see. <laughs> All right, we're going to jump right in and watch it. Here we go. Perfect. Excuse me for one second. I have to check on my pets. Boys going, care my pets while I'm gone. I go, second, I have to check on my pets. Always going out of town, always on the road. Ask people, hey, will you take care of my pets while I'm gone? I go, sure, we'll take care of your pets. Get home. Dogs belly up on a rug. Fish are floating on top of the water. Cats in a microwave. I forget I'm not going to let that happen to me. I'm going to bring them with me. I keep them in here. Hi, guys. Here, I'll take them out. Introduce you to them. Here they are. Fish. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a real fish, do it, on it? It's not. It's fake. I used to use real fish, but they all... Fucking died. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, that was pretty amazing. I, I like mean, that. Yeah, that's that's a pretty cool uh, little way to come out and open. Surprising you would do that in a comedy club, really, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's it definitely grabs their attention immediately, and it yeah. establishes you as you know someone who's going to do some magic, right? Because that's very very unexpected and mm -hmm. very popular trick for for Rich as well. I remember he put it on the market, and we could never keep in stock. As soon as they came in, they would go out, and we would get you know like a dozen of them at a time. Mm -hmm. It was an expensive expensive item to be able to do that because there's a lot of specialized stuff to be able to do that, you know. Yeah. But Rich, he's he's very funny. I I was actually able to. Uh, spend some time with rich i was a production assistant on this when we shot this thing and we you know rented the comedy club for the night to shoot this thing it was it was amazing you know to be able to see the process and and stand with them in the comedy club environment a guy who's just touring and sort of get to be the magic roadie you know i, I was definitely led into another world that i, I should, you know would never be led into otherwise you know yeah. so it was very interesting to watch all of it but Rich is very funny, and you'll see, you know, he's, he's getting them here. It's uh, when we move into this next clip, you'll see he's moving sort of right into the act. And in this next one, there are a couple of magic effects that sort of happen in rapid fire, but they're quick effects. And you'll see that uh, it concludes with to, to be continued that we will find our way back to. So having said all that, let's watch this. <laughs> well, here's what I did. I actually wrote my whole act down in this sheet of paper so I wouldn't forget what the hell I was going to do. <laughs> Boy, I got some funny shit here, I'll tell you. <laughs> well, this is notes from the other guy's ex. <laughs> Sorry, fellas. Actually, just to show you, I am a professional. I will destroy this sheet of paper. I will do the rest of the act completely from memory. Okay, here we go. The first trick is the... Uh, um, I did the fish. <laughs> fish. Okay, here's a piece right here. Let me check and uh, see what the hell it is. <laughs> Oh, thank, you. thank you, those of you that got that. Papers back together. We don't call this shit magic for nothing. <laughs> Later on, I'm going to be doing a trick with my business cards. Here they are. They're blank, but as soon as I get a job, I'm going to have them printed up. <laughs> Here, you take one, do me a favor. You take one, you take one. Oh, this is good. You always get free stuff. You get one. You get one. Okay, there we go. Anybody been to New York lately, by the way? Nicer, Giuliani, kinder, gentler. <laughs> Just remember one thing, if you're walking down the street in New York, remember it is impolite to fill something in a garbage pail while someone else is eating out of it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, write your name on the face of those cards, will you? Well, you all get your own little pen, I'll get back to you later, we're gonna do it later. <laughs> walking down the street the other day in New York, I decided to get a slice of pizza to go. 
like to eat in New York, you can eat on the street. I get the pizza. I'm walking down the street. I'm just ready to bite into it. This panhandler guy comes over to me and says, hey, buddy, can you give me some change for something to eat? Reach in my pocket, take out 50 cents. Then I think, wait a second, I got this slice of pizza. So I ask him, what do you want? You want the pizza, you want the 50 cents. He looks at the pizza, he looks at the 50 cents. He looks at the pizza, he looks at the 50 cents. Back and forth like that for about 30 seconds. Then he threw his hands in the air and ran away. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was confused for a while, but then I realized, hey, beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> Oh, you don't like the tie, is that why you're booing? <laughs> no problem. Oh. Hey, the tie changed. I'm doing my best trick right now. Usually I wait till the end of the show to do my best trick, but I'm starting to realize Lottie might not be here at the end of my show. I'm not taking any chance. See this bag? Looks like a regular bag. No, 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 it's a magic bag, and inside the bag, a jar of wishbone creamy Italian dressing. <laughs> hey, by the way, I'm a creamy Italian myself. <laughs> <laughs> you get the dressing, you put it in the bag, snap your fingers, say the magic words, shadow manazana, changes into, hey, bottle of ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, you're beautiful. <laughs> Pleasure to be here. Can't tell you what warmth and love I feel coming from the room. I'll do it again. Get the bottle of ketchup, put it in the bag. Snap your fingers, say the magic word, shout him out of Zana. Hey, 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 change his back. Ah. <laughs> ah, this one sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> Sorry, they all can't be great. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right. So you're getting ripped off and you got a good trick, huh? I've never seen that done. I've never seen that last one done that way. That's really? really yeah. Oh. yeah, I haven't either. Usually it's just a straight up vanish. You never see mm -hmm. it as a, as a change. I thought it was pretty clever. I think it's a pretty clever routine. Yeah. And then the set list thing. I really love the set list thing too. I think that's I mean, a isn't that great? Yeah. It's yeah. just a little, uh, you know, almost a throwaway that's really impressive. Right. It's red, it's like, red ashes, right? That's yeah. the classic red ashes trick, which if you're in Conjure community, you can you can look that up in the back room. We uh, we did a show on red ashes. Mm -hmm. um, so the the yeah, like typically you're exactly right. Like usually it's a straight up uh, bottle vanish. And uh, and I like the I like the way he did that. Have you seen that before, Steve? With that, the bottle? Yeah, I've yeah. seen that before. Where the change, the two change? Yeah, you know, like usually it'll be like the ketchup bottle in a mustard bottle I've seen people do. And um, I think that, you know, are we allowed to say what that is? Would that give it away if you say what it is? Sure. Yeah, it's a vanishing bottle, sure. Yeah, well, I mean, the specific one it is. If you can get your hands on one of those, you should get one. If you could. Yeah. <laughs> if, if one comes across your way, you should get one. And, and don't be worried too much about it, about, you know, because it's just yeah. a fantastic thing to have in your arsenal. Yeah. It's so it it's so useful, so many different ways. They, they come in beer bottles and all kinds of stuff. And it's just, I love what I love about a guy like Rich here is that, you know, he's about entertaining and he's about, you know, it's not so much about uh, how bad can I fool you. It's like, how hard can I entertain you? <laughs> you know what I mean? And this kind of trick right here, this uh, vanishing bottle trick is just... You know, it's like one of those things you have in your case and you just can do it at a moment's notice and it's fantastic. Yeah, Solid exactly right, Scott. Yeah. Exactly yeah, Scott, right. you're lucky. You're lucky then, Scott. Yeah. If you yeah, got that's one, the one to get. You, start one doing to get. it. Start doing it. That's right. You know, if you yeah. don't have if you don't have something working with it, you better start doing something because it's great. Or sell it to Steve. He'll, he'll take yeah. it off your hands. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking for a couple things. <laughs> You actually could try, um, I don't believe know. it or not, I got a, uh, I got, well, mine's a Coke bottle, but yeah. I got one off of Wish. Oh, yeah? Uh -huh. I sure did. Yeah. And I hardly ever use it because every, every piece of magic I've ever gotten off of there has been just totally crappy. Mm -hmm. That That's decent. That was decent enough. And, oh, and guess, that, guess what the price was on it? Like four bucks. No, it was $13. Oh, okay. But still, that's, that's it, a, it's a respectable price. It is, yeah. That's a respectable price. <laughs> it, respectable. Yeah, yes. Not like $4, like I was saying. It was totally disrespectful. 
ask me in like a year if it's still <laughs> it's holding together. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> all right. So what is cases. <laughs> so what is oranges all about? So this is um, well, it's 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 a it's an impossible location trick. You should just watch the thing. It's a beautiful, beautiful card trick. Super Casey, fun. you call me the great amazo for this trick. <laughs> shuffle them up. I'm a little shuffle like this. I'm going to run through the cards one at a time. Whatever you want, I want you to say when. Most people say after this show. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> No joke, buddy. <laughs> it's part of the old act. Okay, here we go. Whenever you want, just shell out. Stop. Stop. Take a look at it. Here, hold the, take the card. Hold it close to you so I can't see. You're making that card pretty happy there, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'm going to turn around after I do. Show the card to the thousands of people here to see the show. I won't look ahead. Show it to them. Can you all see it? Yep. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, my tie's a different color. <laughs> Okay, get that card, go see it, and rip it right down the center. Notice I spare no expense putting this act together, huh? <laughs> Put those pieces together. Right, that way I'll be doing the magic. Turn it sideways, rip it again. Put those pieces together, turn it sideways, rip it once more. Show business isn't easy. <laughs> Drop all the pieces into the handkerchief. No, you must rip that card in what, 180, 190 pieces? <laughs> Believe it or not, even though she's ripped this card in hundreds of pieces, on the count of three, all the pieces will vanish from the handkerchief and reappear in an as yet undisclosed place. <laughs> <laughs> Feel something already, huh? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't bring my jumbo deck. <laughs> it's a deck joke. One, two. Feel those pieces in there? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Just trying to guess your occupation. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Unbelievable. All the pieces, each and every whole, all the pieces except for one, have completely vanished, which is pretty good because last night they all fell on the goddamn floor. So. <laughs> it's a whole lot better trick already. One out of 190. Hold this for a second. Here they are, right over here. Three official and genuine oranges. I want you to have a free choice of any orange. You can pick any one that you want. Pick me, pick me. <laughs> okay, okay, we'll go by your applause. We'll leave it up to you. The orange with the loudest applause is the one we use. This orange is talking orange is orange number one. This is orange number two. And this is orange number three. Off orange number one, the talking orange. Thank you. Orange number two. Orange number three. Sounds like one, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone you want. Anyone you want. I don't want you to wake up tomorrow morning and say, gee, I wish I had picked a different orange. Really. You have a free choice of anyone. One, two, or three, it makes no difference. Okay, let me have That's the one you want. Want to change your mind? No. Hup. Every time I start to do this, people begin to think the pieces are going to wind up in here. They never do, but this is so dramatic, I hate to leave it out of the end. <laughs> Actually, that's not true. We'll find that not only have the pieces made it into the orange. <laughs> you know, you try to get them to go before the show, but they don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> not only the pieces made it into the orange, but that card that you ripped in hundreds of pieces, it's back to one whole complete card. <laughs> one whole complete card except for one piece. And look, at peace. Just peace. Ooh. Thank you. Keep that in the souvenir. Give her a big hand. Thank you. Pretty strong, man. Come on. Yeah. It's pretty strong. And the reality is they genuinely can pick any one of the three oranges. It doesn't matter. It's really a diabolical method. It's really good. Diabolical. Diabolical. Yeah. <clears throat> so like that. that whole this, you know, card to impossible location. I remember that that really stumping. I remember like Bill and Orange, Card and Orange being one of the one of the first tricks that really stumped me really hard as a 
as a young man and, and, you know, my quest to, to, to learn that one. Right. Uh, and there's, there's not just one way to, to, to accomplish it as a magician. We, we have various methods out on the, the market these days. Right. I mean, there's a lot of ways to accomplish that illusion. And I think it's pretty wonderful that you kind of get to choose how you want to do it. So you not only can choose the way to pr present it, but you can really choose your method the, uh, the, these days. I, I think the, some of the training we have in the back room is some of the best you can get on it, though. We have uh, an amazement plan on this exact thing. Um, and, you know, if you really want to learn, uh, especially if you're just starting out and you want to learn how to just throw this, throw this together and start doing this, this illusion right away, you can. Uh, CC members get access to it. Um, I really like his like personality too. Like I know mm -hmm. some of the jokes are a little like iffy, uh, you know, these days in, in this day and age. And this is this little... has got to be twenty years ago, right? Yeah, yeah. This is in the late nineties. Yeah, right. Like probably around ninety seven or ninety eight is is my memory of it. Yeah, around there. <laughs> so, yeah, times, it's comedy times club were a in a different, different era. Yeah, yeah. different era. Mm -hmm. they, like they you, were just like out of like not letting people smoke in the club like they just had gotten past that right yeah right <laughs> right so like you know there was there so you had a couple of really great things in there because usually when you do like this kind of present or this kind of trick like especially like card in the orange or building orange or whatever you'll you, you'll rip up something rip up a bill say for instance and you give it one piece to someone as a receipt so they can keep it as proof then you'll do whatever you do with the with the with the pieces you know you burn them make them disappear however you eat them whatever you want to do with them right uh but i really like the way you handled that with the hank uh you know and having her do the ripping and the hank and letting and having the one piece i mean it's all, i think it's all very well constructed mm -hmm. and very pretty, practical yeah it's a very practical to get way to get in and out of that trick because often when you're doing that trick you do have to have a very clever way of making whatever it is that's going to go inside of the fruit go away right well, you have to have some clever presentation slant on that and usually it's messy and requires preparation with this one very practical and, and here's what's really nice about it i think you know adam's really onto something usually if you just take that piece off and you go here hold this piece it's it's like a big flag telling you where we're going and what's going to happen right, right? right. it's totally. like we're going to go someplace and we're going to need this Right. But he just held it open and said, drop them all in there. And she just dropped them all in there. So that when he shook it out and the one piece fell, it just seemed like that was that moment that that happened. And it was a complete, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A uh, serendipitous event. Like it just was something that just was, you know, didn't happen every night. Plus yeah. he got a punchline out of it. Last yeah. night they all fell on the floor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. He got a little joke out of it. But, uh, and I just think that just strengthens it so much, I think. Yeah, you know my that my little thing is little, but it makes it stronger. My mentor Frank Brintz, <laughs> who used to perform this on cruise ships, he had this little device. I think it's really funny, like thinking back to how we as magicians solve these kinds of problems mm -hmm. when when we just saw how elegantly it can be solved. You know, but right. Frank used to have this. He, Frank used to have this uh, solution where he would have the spectator uh, rip up all the pieces and then they would take a piece and they would place it inside this this like folded card like th like this card right and they would place it right inside there and then he would close it and he would hand the whole thing to them right and then at the end they would open the thing up and get their piece out right uh, and so of course you know Alex and Steve you know what this thing did right yeah. but what's funny is that um, that just seems so absurd now as like looking like when I was a kid and I looked at that and I thought, wow, that's such a great idea. But now when I look back on it, I'm like, that's kind of an absurd thing to, to ask someone to do. Like, I've got this odd looking device. <laughs> yeah, this. Yeah, yeah exactly. But that's it was Yeah. It that was, yeah, that's what I thought was nice about this and the devil's hank right there. It's just it didn't seem too out of place or anything. And it just seemed like you know, a very straightforward solution to a problem you'd be having at that moment. Like, what am I going to do with the pieces here? Put them in here. What, you know, it seemed like organic. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Very good. Really yeah. solved. Uh, he, he really, I, I, I would say you'd be hard pressed to find like a better construct than that. That was really good. Like you said, Alex, really. And if, if you can select any orange at the end, I mean, come on. 
that's pretty it's good. pretty mm-hmm. great and you could probably do a fourth orange with his method that he that he worked out here you could probably have four set up you know and mm. have it all be any one any one of them could be the card it's pretty great that's nice that's it's a very nice. smart smart thing yeah <laughs> that's very nice i definitely was not aware of it when i you know like i said i got to be sort of magic roadie for him and just in this stilted situation where we were creating this you know instructional video of his magic I was there when he's building the props. He taught me how to build the oranges. You know, he taught me how to do all the stuff. You know, so it's a whole, it's a whole thing. You let's know, discuss it. And I have a, sh- I have a couple questions. Let's discuss it in the after show, can we? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, yeah, let's, yeah. Do that. yeah let's do it. All right, idea. we're gonna move on. This is this probably is one of one of our favorites of, of Rich Murata's, right? Uh, yeah, he's probably most famous for this one. Yeah. Okay, cool. You guys are gonna really like this one. Check it out. Oh, it's good to be. Well, it's good to be here in Sacramento. Flew here from New York. Get off the plane, waiting for my luggage. A guy comes over to me and says, hey, where are you from? I said, I'm from New York City. He said, I'll make you feel at home. He robbed me. <laughs> <laughs> Beat me up, took advantage of me, made me think I'm not worried. I know the police are going to catch him. I'll tell you why. I gave them a great description of the perpetrator. He looks like this. <laughs> See a guy like this? That's the goddamn guy that robbed me. I'm going to reenact the crime for you. Just in case you happen to be there, you can collect the reward. He came over to me and said, give me your wallet. So I reached in my pocket. I took out the wallet. He didn't like it. Thought it was a shitty wallet. Just wanted the money. Made me take the money out and put it in here. As I'm doing that, he sees this watch. Woo, where is it? Here it is. Woo. See this watch? This, by the way, is a great watch. Four, Four alarms on it. One of them goes off 24 hours before my wife's period starts. Makes travel arrangements too, that's what I like about it. <laughs> See that ring? That's a genuine Dymel. <laughs> Gotta stay up late at night, get the ears off TV for this baby. Said he wanted that. Took that off. Put that in there. Of course, he didn't know I did magic. That's why when he got home, whoosh, didn't have a thing. See, had the ring. Whoosh, had the watch. Had the money back. Oh. Anyway. Oh. Oh. So that's the way my act works. Do magic, you don't like that to do comedy. Don't like that to do more magic. Don't like either one by the time you figure that out. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Jim, Very practical, just... practical method to make that effect happen. Yeah. Very yeah. good, man. There's Super a reason that thing's like a bestseller, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Jim Steinmeier has a really great version of this too in one of his lecture notes from the 90s. I don't remember which one, but uh, yeah. Would you say this is a classic plot at this point in Magic, Alex? It's a classic plot, yeah. In fact, do yourself a favor and go watch the Tommy Wonder episodes of Afternoon Astonishment. You can see what I consider to be sort of the ultimate version of this trick, but it's a lot more work, right? This one is very practical. Like this is literally like you have this in your bag, you pick it up and you can go do it. The other ones, a little bit more involved, you know. That's there's trade-offs is, for the is, cleanliness. And I'm gonna ask because I don't know the answer. Is Tommy Wonder where this plot starts? I'm pretty sure it's Alan Shaxon is the first one that Oh, had this, I've heard that. Yeah, that's right. I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah. He British yeah. British magician right. that was doing, you know, gentlemen's clubs and so forth. He's mm-hmm, passed mm-hmm. now, but yeah, I'm pretty sure he's the originator of it. It's so great. I mean uh, his his handling is so practical it, it you could just do it anywhere and you know that's the kind of stuff i just love you know i just yeah, right? love that kind of stuff oh. pull it out of the case you could do it any you could do it in the middle of a farmer's field you know yeah watch has got elegance to that this watch has got four alarms on it <laughs> yeah i wouldn't do that joke <laughs> i would not do that joke no wait, i don't think we can do that joke sorry i just no. you know put it this way i don't know if we can do it or not but i don't think it's wise it it's, true. it's true it also <laughs> makes travel arrangements. <laughs> it also makes travel arrangements okay so you said earlier alex you said you said there's another half of this coming later so we right have- remember remember when we we burnt the set list uh we had a moment in there where he handed out business cards to people and gave them all pens oh yeah we're going to come back around to that. And in the show, he literally did a bunch of bits. I cut out, you know, to make it fit for this, a handful of them, but that's the way the show flowed. It was the, the fish production. Then he goes into that whole set where he passes out those cards at the end, does a couple more effects. And then now he doesn't have to deal with 
pick a card, pick a card, pick a card. The cards have already been picked and he did it very casually, handed out some blank cards to people. And now he's ready to move right into the effect that he wants to do with those four cards that have been passed out. It's pretty wonderful. And the cards are already signed because he just handled it at the front end of the show. Okay, let me have those cards there. Let me see here. You sign it, where's your card? <coughs> Brian, good. It's your card. <laughs> Casey, good. Pamela. Oh, you said Pam last night. That's all right. Either way. Either way. Steve. Okay, there's your cards. I had you sign them. I use my little blank cards here. And there they are in different parts of the deck. Push them in there like that. Now, what I'm going to do, even though they're in different parts, let me memorize where they are. I'm going to get the cards to go to different parts of my body. You excited? <laughs> all I have to do is uh, shake like that. And it happens. One card. Goes here. Hup. One card goes here. Hup. One card goes here. One card goes here. What do you think? Not impressed yet? Wait, here we go. Here we go. Hup, 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 hup. Hup. Steve. Is that you? Oh, that's Steve. Okay. Close. That's one. <laughs> Casey. Okay. Next one's here. Here it is. Bam! Cool. Last one. Here? No, nope. wait a second, I got it. I've been doing this trick so long, I forget which pocket they go to. Here, here, here. Um, oh, wait, here it is. Nope. Oop, oop. There it is. Right. There you go. Whoa! Hey, I'm going to get going soon, but what I'm going to do before I go, I know a lot of you don't like magic, but I'm going to give you some tips on magic. You know, guys, I got a trick that I use to meet women. <laughs> I do this trick, women come running over. Works for me, sure as hell works for any of you guys. You ladies in the front row, hold on to your seats. This is a powerful weapon. Never fails. Never fails. See women I want to meet. First they get her eye, and then I do this. Now you like magic. <laughs> well, thank you very much. My name is Rich Money. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Got to leave him wanting more. And he does. They start screaming for him, and he comes out yeah. and does an encore. It's amazing. <laughs> and you never see someone do that type of card trick in, in that environment. I mean, that's mm -hmm. a that's a hard hard card trick, especially. Mm -hmm. When you're on stage where people want to kill you if you're not making them laugh you know that's a, that's an I, interesting interesting trick for that that environment i like the way he split it up like you were saying i think that's a good idea you know it makes it it makes it more sensible otherwise there's too much dead time right and mm -hmm. i don't i don't know if you can have enough joke to cover the dead time that that you know that that would have in it yeah he sort yeah. of yeah by spacing it out he sort of saved his, himself and his audience from that right a lot it's of workable material you know yeah no doubt it's a lot no of doubt. workable material is there more? No, yeah, that's we're going to watch some more. We're going to watch some more of, of Rich, but we're going to move into, we'll have a little bit more of the stand-up, but we're also going to see him in more of an intimate environment where he's doing, you know, comedy magic still, but he's in more of a close-up situation, right? Mm. So there's a, there's a I, I think we'll get at least one more out of out of Rich. So we'll, we'll okay. have some more. And again, classic effects that he's made into practical show pieces like you this. Know, you know, he's, he's very skilled at this. Here, Yeah, here's, here's what's great. And I, I've known about him for a while. I haven't really seen a lot of his stuff. Uh, but, um, you know, here's a guy, he's just, he's just a worker. I mean, you could just see it on him. You know, he's just a worker. He's just out there doing it, you know? Yeah. He told and, me, uh, when, like I said, I got to spend some time with him during this production. Right. He told me that uh, one of his, at that time, he was like involved with a yacht club. Mm -hmm. And he was like, for all of the socialite parties in the harbor in New York, 
he was the guy, right? He was at all these cocktail parties and he's doing basically his comedy act of doing a walk around and doing magic for people. And we'll get a taste of a little bit of that in the next, That's great. In the next session here too. Great. So Wait. yeah, there's, there's Rich Murata. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Very cool. All right, guys, thanks for joining us today. We're going to go to the after show and we're going to talk about some secrets now. Uh, we're going to talk about how some of that stuff worked. And if you're not a member of Conjure Community, you think about joining the world's best magic club where you get to have fun and do stuff like go to the secret after show. So uh, <laughs> while you're here, why don't you go ahead and hit the subscribe button or the follow button? That way you'll be notified when we go live next time, which is uh, in uh, just a few short days. I believe on Tuesday. Yeah. So we will see you next time on Conjure Community Live Afternoon Astonishment.